Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Christian Anxiety Disorder, CAD. <laughs> Today we're going to be practical in our discussion about a chronic disorder that exists within the Church of Jesus Christ. You might know some people who have this issue, or maybe you have it yourself. Well, we're going to call it out today and deal with it with Scripture. We are talking about anxiety. I have chosen to rename it as Christian Anxiety Disorder. It is not clinically identified, but you and I know that so many of us get anxious over stuff and that the anxiety saps our energy, consumes our attention, causes some of us to lose sleep and so forth. Yes, my friend, that's what we are going to do. But I want you to like and share this with some of your friends. You and I probably know of some people in our church community who worry, who get anxious about almost anything. In the world of mental health, anxiety disorder can be described as a form of mental illness in which an individual experiences unusual worry and fear about something or someone, and it sometimes continues over an extended period of time and takes full residence in our lives. In other words, anxiety is the negative emotion that you feel that causes you to worry, to fret, to be fearful, to be nervous about some things. But why do we worry? Some of us worry over some things that you wish you could change, but you have not been able to experience the change and you find yourself worrying about it. Jesus is our resident counselor and a long time ago he was having an open seminar with a ton of people and one of the hot topics was worry. He really went into the matter in an objective and compassionate way. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Matthew 6 and verse 25. And ladies, in case you think you are the only ones who worry about clothes, <laughs> some of us guys, we do too. Seriously. Or I have a friend who is constantly worrying that she's getting older and nobody seems to be applying for the job of a husband in her life and she wants to have children and all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm talking about, right? She worries terribly. There's a guy in the Bible named Gideon who had an anxiety issue. He dealt with it in an unorthodox way. God has had selected him to lead a group of semi-soldiers to defend the country of Israel against the large and aggressive enemies around. What? Who? Why? How? Me? Are you sure, God? Gideon probably had no sleep that night and he found that this thing was consuming him and, he, and it was not a good feeling. So Gideon decided that he was going to test God. I assume God is not worried if you decide to test him. So Gideon told God that he wanted to know if this is really him, God, calling him Gideon. So he said to God, I'm going to put out a piece of fleece outside tonight. And here is the assignment. If you let the fleece be soaked with dew and the ground around it remain dry, then I will accept that this assignment is of you. Well, it happened just like Gideon asked. But deep down, he was not sure if this assignment was really from God that he should be the leader. So he tried the fleece thing again. But this time he asked God to let the fleece be dry and the grass around it be wet, soaking wet. Well, what do you know? God did just that, that very night. The fleece was dry and the grass around it was wet from the dew. Gideon was now convinced that the assignment was of God. And he went out with courage and bravery with a small army and defeated the larger army of the Midianites. Do you get it? Here was Gideon being terribly anxious about a God assignment. He was sweating and worrying about it until he engaged God in his dilemma and God came true for him, for him that day. Let us get back to the Jesus seminar in Matthew 6. Jesus asked the crowd one simple question. 
Is there anyone who can testify that anxiety adds more height and other features to your body? Mm, I never thought so. This thing called anxiety or worry, Jesus says it is not worth your brain cells. In other words, worrying will not add an inch to your body. He wrapped up that seminar that day on worry and anxiety with these words. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Matthew 6, 33 and 34. You see, this thing called anxiety can be horrible. Some of us can't sleep. We are lethargic in the days. We overeat or some of us develop some crazy sweet tooth. There are some of us who drive ourselves crazy trying to find a Christian who can help us to get rid of this thing. Nothing seems to be working. Well, Jesus said, Get your priorities right, man, in case of issues that affect our lives, like the hurricane that slammed into Florida over a week ago. Get your priorities right. Don't be twisted out of shape. Instead, focus on doing the things that God asks of us. Paul comes on the scene after Jesus. But this guy, Paul, has a resume that is super, super impressive. Paul did a great ministry going to various churches, but he came up with a compliment of great advice on how to tackle anxiety. Like you get anxious when you see a mouse in the house. You can't find the mouse, but you are sure he is in the house. Your anxiety level has been shooting through the roof and worry and fear has come along as well. Paul was familiar with anxiety. He used to get anxious about the thorn in the flesh until God spoke to him in response to this anxiety prayer. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 8. That is not what Paul was expecting, but he grabbed that awesome divine solution. You've never heard Paul talk about the thorn in the flesh issue again. And that is because he got what Jesus said. Leave the troubles at the feet of Jesus. So imagine Paul has obviously got over this anxiety issue. And so now he writes a piece to the rest of us, particularly to a church in Philippi, that this is very important. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4 verses 6 and 7. Do you get it? It's not wise for a Christian to have anxiety issues over anything when you have Jesus. He totally understands your issues and the adverse effects that anxiety can, can bring upon you. So he says, it is simple. Start praying and turning over your anxiety issue to Jesus. And right away, it's a great exchange. He takes your problem that's causing you anxiety and he gives you his peace. Whoever heard that peace, like the Jesus brand of peace, can be a great antidote to anxiety, worry, fretting, fear, unhappiness. Try it today, my friend. You'll be glad you did.